Happy Vending. Hi and welcome to Happy Vending. I'm Bill and today we are going to be replacing the whole cooling deck in this Royal 669 machine, G3 machine. And this is a repair you hate to do because the cooling decks are one of the most expensive parts to put in these things. However, people like cold drinks and I happen to be walking by this machine uh, a couple weeks ago and noticed that the cabinet temperature was 89 degrees and I knew there was a problem and when your cabinet is is really warm like that you really got to figure out if it's the cooling deck itself or maybe the relay that turns on the cooling deck maybe the temperature sensor uh, there's a lot of different things it can be so before you go out and buy a new cooling deck you want to do a little troubleshooting and one way to do that is to go into the service mode of the control board and test the relay and there is an option in there to test the relay to make sure the relay is working and kicking on that cooling deck the way it should. The way you get into the service mode on this G3 machine is you go up here on the control board and press this little blue button and then we're going to take a look at the front display so the, the navigate through the different menus, you press the second button on the, on the selection and that takes you up. The third button takes you down and you navigate until you find test. Oh, I just went past it. I'm going to go back. Test. And to enter the test menu, you press the fourth button and then I can go through the different tests. This is a vending test, selection test, display, sensor. Oh, here it is, the relay test. And now I'm going to press 4 to enter the relay test. And this first one here is the compressor. And when I press the fourth button, the enter button, it should turn this to a 1, which tells the relay to turn on and turn on the compressor. And I just heard it click. The relay is working. That tells me the relay is working. And you hear the compressor trying to turn on, but it just went off again. Come on down. Let's get closer to it. Get, get close. You can actually hear it click to turn on and then click it, it clicks to go off. And this has a fan in it. The fan is running. There it clicked, clicked off. And it, no, it clicked on and then just clicked off again. When you hear that type of clicking coming from your, your compressor in the back, it's usually a sign that it's dead. Now there's a fan in there that's running, so the fan is good. There's also the evaporator fan up top, which blows the um, air through the evaporator coils, which are the coils that get cold and makes the cabinet cold. That fan basically runs all the time, unless you have a cabinet that has a power save mode that turns that fan off to save energy. But on my machine, it's, it's on all the time. In most machines, your evaporator fan is on all the time. If that fan broke, you'd probably see ice all over your, your um, evaporator coils and they freeze up and that's a sign that that part needs to be replaced. This fan's working, but the compressor in the back is clicking on and off. It's a goner. This is actually the original compressor in the machine. It was manufactured in March of 1997. So you got to think about that. Got over 20 years of service out of this cooling deck. It certainly did its part and it's time to replace it. So I ordered brand new from Royal, brand new cooling deck. Um, I wasn't even going to bother to have it, I try to have that service. Now you can get remanufactured cooling decks for these machines. They'll usually run about $290. This machine gets a lot of service. It's a very important machine to me. So it was worth going to Royal and getting a brand new a cooling deck. A brand new one costs about $400, a little under $400 plus the shipping to get it here, but it is worth it. It's going to make these drinks icy cold and should last another 20 years and then it will be somebody else's problem because I'm sure I won't be here in 20 years. So alright, so let's get started with this and um, we'll get out this deck, but before you do any work in here, it's uh, very important to unplug the whole machine. I'm going to go in the back and just kill the power because you don't want to get shocked. 
Now before I take out the coiling deck, I want to show you another way to test your coiling deck besides just testing the relay. If the relay doesn't seem to be working, but you still want to test that your coiling deck is working, the coiling deck plugs into this power block right here. And you can actually unplug your coiling deck. And if you get an extension cord and plug the cooling deck directly into a wall outlet, you're then avoiding the relay, avoiding the control board, and it should just come on and go. And if you plug it direct in and it doesn't turn on or it's clicking, then once again, you know it's not the problem of the control board, you know it's not your relay, it's got to be the cooling deck. Another problem sometimes that happens with cooling decks is they get low in refrigerant. Now if that were the case, it really wouldn't be clicking on and off like that. Usually your coils start getting, your evaporator coils start getting all iced over. And it's a sign that um, you need refrigerant. And something like that could possibly be repaired. You get a, a refrigeration technician to come out and recharge it and um, maybe uh, figure out where the leak is. Because if it's losing refrigerant, there's got to be a leak somewhere. And they put dye in there and they, they try to figure out where the leak is. But like I said, that is not the problem with my cooling deck. The other thing that could create a problem with a cooling deck is that if the temperature sensor is bad and it doesn't know if it's warm enough in the cabinet to even turn it on, and the, the temperature sensor in this uh, machine is on the back wall, that could have been a problem, but I know that's not the problem because I hear it clicking to try to turn this on. And then the final thing that could be wrong is the actual entire control board could be bad, which is up top, in which case you'd have to replace that entire board, which can get pricey, but we've also pinpointed the problem that it wasn't that, that it is the uh, deck. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of, um, remove this chute so that we can get the evaporator out. And there is um, just one 10 millimeter bolt in here that needs to come out, and then this can come out. However, you do have to be careful because there's a drop sensor mounted underneath this that when the can falls, it tells the machine that it vended that can, and you want to be careful not to pull the wires out of that sensor. So, okay, let me get started here. I'm going to go get my ratchet. So, I got my 10 mil socket. I'm going to simply loosen this. You need your extension on there to be able to get into that. A longer extension would help, but I only have this short extension today. It'll work. These machines are actually pretty nice. I mean, these cooling decks are designed to come out and to be put a new one in. It's not like your refrigerator at home that in order to get the compressor out of there, you have to drain the whole system of the refrigerant. This is going to come out all in one piece already, and the new one will go in there already charged, and you don't have to charge the system. So they're designed to be replaced out in the field. So I'm going to put this bolt off to the side where I won't lose it. Now before I actually try to pull out this um, product chute here, I want to take this little guard off because the, the tube that comes from the evaporator down to the compressor goes through here and also the wire to the drop sensor and it's, you, you're going to need to have these wires come out so you have room to maneuver it around. It's just simply uh, Phillips, screw, Phillips screws in here. You can take one off leave the other one loose. Now there is, it's pretty stuck in there, there is some foam in there and that's important because you do want foam to keep that insulated that the cold air from the cabinet doesn't get down into the bottom of it so it is important to keep that foam, don't lose that foam. I'm going to put the other screw right back so I don't lose that and I'll know where it is when I need it to put all this back together. So now I got my wires nice and loose. This is the wire to the door switch, which I have to be careful of. I mean, you might even want to remove that to get it out of the way. Uh, we can do that. I mean, it's not hard to do. Take the wires off of it. And then push it out. Yeah, take that door switch, get that wire out of the way. And now let's get the... Um, product chute out of here. Now open up your door wide to get this out. Remember it does have that drop sensor. Let's take a look on the bottom of it. You see it in there? 
you have your drop sensor, you want to be careful of that and that wire that you don't mess that up. And we will have to test that when we put it back in to make sure that's functioning properly. So I'm just going to put that off to the side. Now we can see the uh, evaporator right here. That's the part that gets cold. Behind it is its fan that, that, that blows the, the cool air through that. And then down here we have the condenser and then behind that the compressor. And they're all the components, but the tubes for this come right through down here. So this whole unit is going to come out. There's not really much holding it in there. Uh, I do see that somebody has zip tied some of the wires from the machine onto the, the copper tubing of the evaporator and I'm going to get my wire cutters. That needs to be cut off. <laughs> snippy snippy on that. There we go. That's all free. Uh, on the actual deck itself we just have two bolts here and they are 10 millimeter too so use your ratchet that you had before. Get them loose and removed and put them aside because the new deck does not come with new bolts. You have to reuse the bolts. I know this one here is a little dusty. If you let these things get too dusty, that's going to shorten the, the life of the compressor. So you should try to get in here a couple times a year with a, a stiff brush, brush out all that dust or a vacuum and get all this, this dust out of there because that is no good for it. All right, that's loose and now we got these Phillips screws that we've got to take off to get the evaporator out. And there's four of them. Let's get at it. Now when you get out this old compressor and the old cooling deck, you shouldn't just throw it in the trash. I mean, it does have refrigerant in it. It should be recycled properly. So I will have this unit recycled. Or you can turn it into somebody that rebuilds them and then they will make a remanufactured deck out of it. All right, so this part is, is ready to go. There's just a couple clips here up at the top. You can see them, these little metal clips. There's two of them. They should just pop straight up. I'm going to put them over with my screws. There's also two screws over here on the side. Come here, take a look here. Before we can pull it out, you see that there's two Phillips screws on the left side. They'll need to come out. With all the other screws. They're actually all the same size screw. And now you can pull this out and pull this out and your whole cooling deck is going to come out in one piece. Try not to break the lines because you don't want to have that refrigerant escape into the atmosphere and destroy the ozone. There it is. Now in the back you can actually see the compressor part. So you have the compressor, the condenser, the condenser fan, and the evaporator. And then back there is the evaporator fan. So here's our new cooling deck came in today from Royal. Uh, it gives directions on properly unboxing it. You do want to be careful with this because you don't want to break any of the lines and have your refrigerant escape on you. This is the part that is protecting the evaporator. There's the new compressor down there and then the condenser coils. Let's just tear down the sides of the box. So we can get it out of here safe and sound. So now you can lift it by this and actually pull it out of there. But you want to be careful around these, these, these fins because they are sharp and you will cut your hand on them. I did once before. 
Here we go. She's loose. She's loose. Let's get this thing in the machine. Okay, here we go. Now we can get this box off of our evaporator. Be careful of these fins too because they are very sharp. In fact, it would probably be a good idea to have gloves on, but I was not really well prepared for this. I was, um, I didn't know the, mach the uh, cooling deck was coming today, so I wasn't really expecting to replace it, but it came and I figured, let's get it in. These little pieces of styrofoam, they need to come out too. I didn't notice it was there when I first pulled it out. But that, that should come out. And unloop your power cord because you need the full length of this to get to the power brick where it plugs in. Now I can feed that power cord around the back and get it into the little indent where it comes out of. See up in here? I don't know if you can see that, but in the corner there's a little wedge for you to pull this power cord out of. And now that that's in, I'm ready to push this guy back. Just pushing her straight back being careful of everything, moving this back into place, moving this, keeping an eye on my tubes, keeping an eye on my wires. You don't wanna pinch anything. You don't wanna break anything. Ease it in there. As I was putting it in, I'm, I'm realizing that the uh, upper shroud piece on the evaporator does not come with the new cooling deck, so I need to get these clips and this piece and, and put it on the new, the new evaporator. Now, I got this pretty much in place. The tubes over here were a little in the way. They required some light bending. Um, maybe when they manufactured this in the factory, um, they didn't quite do it the exact spec as the other deck. So you got to be real. You got to be real careful with that. You don't want to break it too. But I think I got it in in a way now that I can um, screw this this back in. You're just going to line up your your holes here. I don't know if you see that. Get these lined up. Oh, there we go. Got the first one. Screw that in there. And once we get this in place, we will put the upper shroud back in. The shroud directs the air through this evaporator. There we go, got the second screw hole lined up. Mm. All right, got all four of those Phillips in. Now this has this little bent edge that goes on the top. And then that falls down onto it. Just line it up that it covers everything. And put those four clips on. Two on the top. Straight down. I got it. Straight down. One clip. Let's get the other. On the other side. Use a force, and then these other two clips go right here. That, but once again, this shroud helps direct the air from the evaporator fan. Try not to bend these th these fins. I mean, a couple of them might get bent. You can bend them straight though, either with a flathead screwdriver or your finger. Bend them back down. As I was putting it in. I got pushed down a little bit. At this point, clean any debris away from the drain. All the um, water that drips off of the evaporator coils comes down into this little drain. You make sure that there's 
nothing stuck in there because that will clog up and then you'll start dripping over with all the water won't go to the back evaporator pan and then here you just make sure your wires are are in your your coils are in there and then we're just going to put the um, product chute back in place and get that screwed in there Come straight in with that and, and then look back here it just lays on this ledge you see that ledge in the back of the, the cabinet you just lay up on top of that and then it should be lined up with the hole and we get that 10 millimeter bolt in there let me go get it almost there okay that's good and tight and then this wire you get that in there now's a good time that we can get the um, the door switch and all the other wires into place behind this little plate we get all those wires shoved in there and we put that little metal plate back, take out the screw that we had left in there, swing it around, and screw that back on. Make that tight, make sure your foam is good in there because you don't want cold air getting out of that. Tighten up the other side. That's good. Now I'm going to put my door switch back on. Like so. Get the two wires that went to that. Put back on. sure they're good and tight because if the door switch isn't working it won't go into vent mode compressor won't come on and there's a little um, clamp here to put the, the wires so that they don't hang down for the door switch that's a nice little touch put the wires back in there and crimp that around good this looks good the only other um, screws we have to get in are the ones down here for the um, condenser. Make sure my tubes go up into the notch. And let's get my two screws in here on the side. One screw. All right, that's good. That's in place. Now we just got two bolts that go into the deck here. Line them up. That's good. And finally, the power cord plugs into the power brick. And that is a completed job. The only thing now we would just test to make sure the compressor comes on and then also I like to test the drop sensor on the um, product chute to make sure that that's working properly. Uh, before you plug her in make sure in shipping that the compressor box wasn't flipped over because all the oil in the compressor um, would go into the wrong area and actually could burn out the compressor but I know this box had been level for a while all day and I don't think it was flipped and shipping so I think we're good to go I'm gonna plug it in okay I'm gonna turn it on in the test mode and I hear it kicking on you see the fan going in the back and within a fairly short amount of time, you should start feeling the evaporator coils getting cold, you know, if all is right in the world. But it is not clicking off like the other one was. 
and that's a very good sign. Now that I know the compressor is working, I'm gonna close the door here and just test the operation of the machine. First of all, we'll test the switch. The door switch works because the lights have come on. It's gonna go into bend mode. We wanna test that drop sensor. We wanna test the products that are on the two far ends, the water, which is in column one, and this Dr. Pepper Cherry, which is all the way on the uh, 12 column. We wanna make sure that when they drop, the machine knows it bended and it doesn't try to dispense another one. So let's throw a dollar in here. <laughs> Make sure you put it in the right way. I have this set that it only accepts dollars in one direction so that when I pull out the stack they're all in the same way. The bank likes it better that way. So I'm going to bend the, um, the bottle. It sensed it, so we know the drop sensor is working. It's picking up good on that right side. Let's just try the other side. Dr. Pepper Cherry is always a favorite here in this building. Thank you, and goodbye. It's sensing products dropping, so we know the drop sensor is working. The cabinet temperature I see um, is now down to, I think it was 68, no, 67. So I waited about 10 minutes and the cabinet's already down to 48 degrees, so I know that compressor is working real good. And we also know it's bending properly, so that means the drop sensor is working. Hopefully you learned something, and as always, happy bending.